Hello everyone. We are building a generative chatbot using TensorFlow and Keras library that will respond to our sentences. So this is a pre-trained collab notebook on the screen. We can see a conversation that happened between a person and our chatbot. So it starts with, hi, I'm a chatbot. So if we say, hi, how are you? It replies back, hi there, how are you? What if we ask, what is your name? It says, I am R Danny, but you can call me Danny. And we have different other responses to which it replies in a very good way. So watch the full video so that we can all get an understanding of AI chatbot. Hola amigos, this is Somvir and welcome to Mechanic Dude. So, in this video series, we were trying to create an AI chatbot that would respond to our input. Last time we built a model where we used encoder decoder architecture to translate English to French. So, we are going to use almost every aspect of that architecture in our chatbot. So, I highly recommend you that you go and watch our previous videos first and then continue watching this. Always the links will be given in the description for our previous videos. Go and have a look. In this video, we will be creating a generative chatbot and I gave it the name Echo. Before we move on to the video, I would like to inform that due to the computational and memory constraints, the model was not very good. But it was good enough to give us the explanation and the architecture of our chatbot. So without wasting any further time, Let's dive into the video. Before building our chatbot model, I would like to share some information about the chatbot. So I am calling it Echo. A complete understanding of how TensorFlow and Keras library is used in NLP, encoder decoder architecture and how LSTM is used is provided in the previous videos. Please go and have a look. So about the data set, it is a data set of conversation between a person and another person who acts as a bot companion. This dataset is available at Kaggle. Now before moving forward, we need to understand how our data looks like. So if we check the Kaggle site, so it will have human text, robot text and a CSV file. In the human text, we can see it consists of all the conversations from human end. And in the robot.txt, it will have all the conversations from robot side. We combine them in a data frame so that it will be easy for reprocessing. We convert them into lowercase. We remove all the punctuations. We remove all the digits, but we still have emojis. We can encode them using the S key and ignore other variables and again decode them so that we can only get S key. Now the next step is to append start and end tokens at the robot side. As we are taking only 1300 numbers and the length can be very long. So I am getting the maximum length which should be under 100 and I am truncating all the lengthy sentences. Sorting all the words in human side and robot side, we can get a list of all the words. We will name the number of human words and robot words and we will call them encoder tokens and decoder tokens. Now creating a dictionary that will hold the word and its index. Now we create arrays containing the input and output data as well as target data. We will create three dimensional matrix and this will be one hot encoded for input data, output data and the target data. So as I informed you that we are one hot encoding the input and output data. So we are putting one at every index of the word. For the target data, we are trying to remove the start from array so that we can give the start as an input to the decoder model and it will start predicting next words according to it. So for that, we are using P-1 so that it will ignore the start token. And another reason for one not encoding the target data is that the final layer of the decoder model will have softmax function which will return only one variable. Before starting to build the model, I will highly recommend you 
to go and watch the previous videos because it is explained in detail about this process. It will have two stages. First is training stage where we will provide all the data to the model so that it will learn what to predict next. This is also a form of teacher forcing and in the next stage of inference, we change the encoder and decoder model a bit so that it is capable of taking input and predicting on its own. We provide a LSTM layer with return state is equal to true because we will be using this state for the decoder input, scrapping the encoder outputs and only keeping state. Now moving on to the decoder model, then we provide LSTM layer and here we are not using the states of the decoder LSTM, we are only using the outputs and at this point I would like to state that this model took several days to reach this point because with the nominal data we have and the computational constraints I was not able to get best results so I have to iterate many values and this is the best outcome I could get but I am sure there are many ways we can enhance this model we compile our model using the RMS prop optimizer and we are providing sample weight mode as temporal we provide a checkpoint so that we can monitor the validity loss of our model we fit our model on input and target data as batch size 40 epochs for 600 and we are splitting the data 20 percent for validation at the end of 600 epochs we can see that we have 87 accuracy and 83 validity accuracy we have loss comparatively less then validity loss which is around 64 percent which is not quite good but with the results i am happy then we move on to the inference stage where we change our model so that it can take new data give output here we are creating encoder model using the encoder inputs and we are taking output as encoder states at the decoder model we are instantiating two inputs that will be used for hidden state and cell state and these will be received from encoder model. The encoder state inputs are used for the prediction of first word and this decoder LSTM will provide states which will be used for next words. It will receive input for decoder as well as the state inputs. So as we discussed, the first time it will take encoder states and from the next time it will start taking its own inputs. At the next stage, we reverse the dictionary of character and its index so that the output which is given from the decoder is in form of integers and we can use these integers to be converted into words. Next we define a function to predict words. First we will get the state values from encoder model. We instantiate an array of zeros with three dimensions as we are giving only one word to the decoder and it will predict the next word. So as discussed we will provide the start word to the decoder model and encoder states so that it will predict the first word. So using a while loop we can get output tokens hidden state and cell state from decoder model providing input the sequence we just defined and the state values from encoder. And using this argmax function we can get the output index and using this argmax function we will get a integer from the predicted values and we are using this integer as an index for word from our reverse dictionary and taking out the sampled character. If the sampled character is end or it has reached the maximum output length then the stop condition will true and the program will stop otherwise it will try to predict the next word so we again instantiate an array of zeros and this time we will use the index of sample token that we just received we now provide the hidden and cell states from the decoder model we just received we create a class so that we can get a good functionality of our chatbot first we are defining negative responses exit commands from these we are defining a function as start chat here the chatbot will start by saying these words and it will check for the negative responses if not it will start the chat 
So generate response is right here. What it will do is it will take the input from the user and it will convert to the string. Once we get the matrix of user input, we provide it to the decode sequence function we earlier defined and it will give us the response. Now we are removing the start and end from our sentence and we are returning the chatbot response and we start the chat and as we have already seen it will start with hi i'm chatbot so if we ask him how are you it says how there how are you so if we look at the other responses also it is trained quite well and it is giving good responses though it is not giving human like responses but i'm quite happy that it is able to provide some output or provide some words for us so with this our chatbot build is completed so that was the video guys i hope it was informational and we got to learn something from it anyways if there are any improvements that can be suggested please let me know in the comment section if you love watching the video leave a like also don't forget to subscribe so that we can learn together in our further videos we will meet in the next video until then adios